Hi and welcome to the Retrologic Lab. My name is Michael and today I'm going to install some mass storage on my TRS-80 Model 4 computer. Now I'm going to do this without spending a lot of money. I'm going to use stuff I've really got lying around the lab anyways. I'm going to use a HXC floppy disk emulator that I used to have connected to the Coco but I no longer need there. And I'm going to figure out a way to connect it up to the Model 4 for a reliable SD card based storage system that'll make it you know easier to use the machine day to day. I hope you enjoy this and let's get to it. What I'm going to do in this video is I'm going to connect this HXC drive emulator to the Model 4 permanently. Previously I used this on the Coco, but I don't need it on that machine anymore, so it needs a new home. The problem that I've always had with this thing is that I was stupid when I bought it and I didn't buy the case for it, and that's made it a bit of a dangerous device. I put a bunch of black tape on the back to kind of protect it, but I actually managed to short out a floppy disk drive and blow it up using this guy here because it just wasn't in a case. Now, the good thing, of course, is that it gave me content for another video where I fixed that floppy drive, but it's not really uh, practical going forward any further. Okay, so I want to put this thing in, but I don't want to spend any money. So I found this old switch sitting around in my junk box and I think it'll make a good case for the HXC. I can kind of fit it inside there. I'll wire up the lights. It's got a nice power plug at the back there. I've got the uh, 5 volt power supply for this thing. Be able to run the drive cables here. So it should work out pretty well. On the bottom of the Model 4 there's a floppy disk connector so I can use this cable here, plug it in and run it to this case here and I'll be set. Initially I was going to put the HXC in the Model 4 case, but there's not a lot of great spaces to mount this thing. You know, one idea is I could sort of mount it vertically here and have the SD card poking out one of those slots. That way I could change the SD card just by flipping over the computer, which is, you know, not super convenient, but not horrible. Problem is, is that that's going to put the HXC very close to the high voltage stuff going on for the CRT. I don't want to do that. That's just a little too uh, risky. I was thinking of lying it down here, but there's also these two power supplies close by. They have 120 volts coming into them. And you know, if there's a bunch of wires coming off this thing, there's a chance that the wires could rub against the power supply somehow, short things out or cause a fire, or, you know, all sorts of nasty stuff. So I don't like that. The other option would be to put the HXC between these two drives here, or even underneath. But to do that properly, I need to fabricate some kind of mount, and I just don't want to do that, and I don't want to drill any holes in this case or anything. Another thing is, is that there's this display on the HXC. It's a nice blue, which is totally going to clash with the green of the CRT. And so, you know, it's not going to look very authentic if I have this bright blue screen sitting on the front of my model for so i don't like that idea so much based on what i had to work with it seemed like the best option was just to put this in an external case somehow i'm using my crummy screwdriver here you know if there's one reason to subscribe to my channel it's so that one day i'll be able to afford a proper screwdriver probably one that doesn't have a piece of metal sticking out the base there so i don't shock myself so you know if you want to keep me safe please consider subscribing Anyways, let's get this thing open. Not sure what's inside here, but I do know I hate the noise this thing makes. That rattling. It's always made that noise. Okay. And he's open. Okay, so we got the router board here. Um, you know, obviously I'm just going to pull this whole board out, recycle the case, looking to see if there's anything I could uh, make use of. Some capacitors, I mean I can't really recycle those. I'm going to pull this off this board, and I pull some of these LEDs off this board as well. There's a little shield in there, 
probably not needed. And this thing should come right out. Awesome. Boards out. Let's just sort of dry fit this thing in. So what I'm thinking is that I will remove that screen there. Then I'm going to line it up so the SD card is poking out the back. Perfect. So I got my little case and fits nicely here. Just going to clean up the back of this board, remove this crazy electrical tape I've had on this thing for years. So they stand off, and I'm going to use those screw those into the board and glue them down. Just using epoxy to do this because I don't really have any other glue that's gonna set quickly. Coat this one here and I'm gonna carefully, I don't wanna make a mess of this. It's placed and it ain't moving. Okay, I'm going to put this aside while it's drying and then I'm going to scavenge some parts. Okay, so I got this board here. I'm going to pull that thing off. I'm going to pull those inductors off too eventually. Maybe I'll do it right now. Who knows? Those crystals would be kind of useful. The big thing is the power connector there. So I'll just coat it with flux. Oops. Solder. There we go, we're free. So I got my component. Perfect. Little connector there. I think I'll leave those inductors for now. I'll save the this board for later and I'm gonna pull these guys off because I'm sure I can use them. And now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna well maybe what I'll do is mount that in there. Yeah, I think I'll glue that in there and then I can put the glue away. So what I did is I cut out the LED section of this board, kind of nasty looking cut there. And then I pretty much just glued it to the front of the router case. That way I've got all the LEDs still, you know, mounted to some sort of substrate and I can easily wire off of them. What I'm going to do is I'm going to take some DuPont jumpers here and I'm going to cut them in half pretty much and I'm going to make connectors out of them. I'm not entirely sure how this board is wired up but I've got these probes connected to my constant uh, current power supply. I'll just start probing these connections and see if I can get the light to light up. Oh there we go. I got amber there. Let's try to get the green going. No, amber. It's reverse polarity here. Oh, there we go. So, one way we get amber, the other way we get green on these two pins. Should be the same for each light as we go along. Perfect. So, I'm going to pull this off. I'll start by slapping some uh, flux on this component. I'm definitely. <coughs> Not an expert at SMD rework. I'm just going to heat up these components a little bit. I don't want to actually melt the solder, I don't think, with the heat gun. I just want to warm up the board a bit. I'm going to remove it with soldering iron, tweezers.
Okay, so I, I've decided to use a heat gun. Let's apply some heat. Yeah. These tweezers aren't tweezers aren't the best. Get the crap out of this. Maybe that solder will start flowing soon. There we go, got it. Let's crank this up a bit. Okay, so I'm cranking up the heat a bit here. Come on. There we go, got it. Done. Done, 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 done. And then, I'm gonna clean up those pads. Flux away. Flux, 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 flux. And let's clean these up. Okay. Perfect. I've made up a little connector here, not super elegant, and I got a connector on this side, and it's just wired to the board where the LEDs were. I've got the HXC connected up to the power plug on the back of the router, and there's only actually two pins that are needed because it only uses five volts on the HXC, so I've got the center pin connected to ground, and I've got this outer pin connected to five volts. I've got the LEDs running into the router case yeah, I just can plug it in nice thing about the router is that it uses 5 volts so I don't need any sort of power supply and it beeped and we got some lights on the front of the router there great looks like we're good just before I put this back together I want to show you the jumper positions for the model 4 uh, you want to have ID 0 set to drive A and you want to have ID 1 set to drive B Okay, the board's all mounted in there nicely, and I can put this thing back together. There we go. We have our little guy here. Pop the SD card in the back. Okay. Let's power it up again. Just make sure it turns on. There we go. Looks like it's going to work. If you own a Model 4, you probably already know there's a drive expansion connector at the bottom of the machine. It's this one right here. Unfortunately, it's not marked. Uh, and not only is it not marked what the function is, pin 1 isn't marked either. Just to show you how you plug this thing in so you know. Basically, pin one is towards the outside of the case. Your red stripe for your drive cable is gonna go closest to the outside of the case. It will actually plug in backwards. Uh, there's no key or anything on that, so it's kind of scary. Just make sure you get that right before you connect everything up. And I got my little guy here, and we're ready to go. Let's fire this machine up, see what happens. Okay, so I booted the machine up. I'm gonna enter in a date that'll work and I'm at my prompt now if I go dir 0 I will get the directory of this drive and if I go dir 2 I should get the first directory on the HXC and we should see it okay well says a legal drive number. Okay, well, why is that? Well, you have to actually enable the device in TristDOS. So the way to do that is use the system command. System drive equals to enable. And then I'm going to do the same thing for drive three because the HXC emulates two drives hmm. 
Okay. Now if I type devices, I'll get a list of all the disk devices in the system. And you can see I've got my first disk, drive zero, then drive one, no disk in there. Then I've got uh, drive two and drive three. One thing I did do is I put an 80 track disk image on drive two and that gives me, well, double the storage. So that's kind of handy. And if I go dir, let's say three, the HXC, return the directory. If I go dir two, you'll see it's an empty disk, but there's 354K free which is great. Tristos supports devices up to 196 tracks. That means I can get, you know, almost a meg of storage on an image. And when I could do that, you know, do I need a hard drive or a hard drive emulator? Probably not. This is pretty much good enough. I didn't bother to connect up the display quite yet. I could do that. I don't know if I really need to. Uh, I would much rather just do all the drive control through software, which, you can do, I just need to write some software to do it. There's three buttons on the HXC as well to select drive image. Again, I'll use software in order to change the drive image. I don't really want those physical buttons on this router package. I think in general, this was a pretty successful project. Uh, I took a bunch of stuff I had lying around, an old broken router, an HXC that I was never using, and I turned it into some mass storage for my TRS-80 Model 4. I hope to use the Model 4 a bit more and maybe do a few more videos on it now that I have uh, something that's a lot more convenient than floppy disks to use as mass storage. If you like this video and you'd like to see more of this kind of content in the future, please consider subscribing. Uh, I really appreciate all my subscribers, uh, both ones that I already have and ones that I'll get in the future. If you have any comments or questions, or if you have a Model 4 that you've attached some sort of mass storage device to, please let me know in the comments below. It'd be great to hear from you. Thanks for watching.